Hi, hello. Welcome back to the Misadventures. So, today we are going to play a book of beasts and buddies. Dedicated to Bud, Lily, and Blossom. Dad taught me the ways of the wilderness. Mom made sure I always had snacks, and Blossom found friends wherever she went. When they could no longer travel to visit their favorite places and friends, I devised a way to bring creatures and places to them. Ooh, mystery. Let's interact. <laughs> hey there. You're adorable. A scoot scoots near. Hello, Mr. Scoot. I will high-five you. You raise your hand for a high-five, but the Scoot has no hands, or arms, or fingers. I don't know what I was thinking. Can I, can I feed you without making up? You show the Scoot some snacks from your pack. It simply smiles back and continues to scoot about while well, you keep scooting. I'ma poke ya. You poke the Scoot. It is very sticky. You have some super sticky Scoot spoot on your finger. How dare you? I don't want to know what your scoot spoot is or where it came from, and now I don't trust those beady little eyes of yours. I'm out of here. You realize that you stepped in scoot spoot, oh no, which hampers your movement. However, the scoot isn't chasing you, so your slow retreat is successful. Great. Ah, scooty patooty. That's, that's adorable. Onward. Hi there. A wild gubbins appears. You must be gubbins. Hello, I am here with the IRS. You are under arrest for tax evasion. Get on the ground. Oh, high five, of course. The gubbins gives you a high five. Nice. Can I share with you? Gubbins doesn't seem interested in any snacks, but he gives you a hug anyhow. Okay. That's adorable. You're precious. I don't want to hide from you, but I will. There isn't anything dangerous to hide from, and there isn't any gubbins to hide from either. The gubbins is gone. Oh no, gubbins, come back. Wait. Can I... We'll inspect. You observe your surroundings. There is no sign of any gubbins in the vicinity. Gubbins, wait, no. Come back. You leave out some snacks and wait for the gubbins to come back. Can I hide? You hear the gubbins calling from afar. Oh, yes, gubbins, come to me. Come to snacks. You leave to look for gubbins. I will find you, gubbins. I will find you. Gubbins, go get us. Stealth 112. That will not stop me from finding you. Other names are Twiggins, Fugins, and Vexens. That's adorable. You're precious. Oh, hi there! A stony worm pokes its head out of a hole in the ground. Magic. Can, can I perform spells? Sorcery? You contemplate casting stone to flesh on the earthen worm. You imagine it would become a flesh worm, craving your flesh. Hmm. Perhaps not. If you are hungry, though, I will feed you. Just not my flesh. You didn't think to bring any inorganic snacks that such a creature might find appetizing, but the worm appears to have unearthed a sapphire that it happily ingests. Well then, that's cute. Can I poke you? Did you fart? How rude. The worm's stony skin feels like living earth. The worm excretes a dusty toot. I knew it! How dare you. I'll wave at you. Perhaps because it has no arms, or possibly because its twin gemstone eyes are actually inert eye spots, the worm does not wave back. Well then, I will do a strategic retreat. How about that? You bravely run away. Yes, bravely. Foul beast. Lapis vermis. Subterranean rocks, dirt, gems. True neutral. Stone Slug and Shirtwort. 
Jam worms are reclusive silicon-based creatures that inhabit the deepest recesses of the earth where they forage for rare minerals to consume. They are blind and perceive through taste, scent, and sound. Gem worms excrete a dusty powder and communicate via flatulence in a combination of scent and sound. Well then, I... you were talking to me then. I can't help but wonder what you were trying to say. Onward. Oh. Um, hey there. Fancy meeting you here in the vacuum of space. Hmm. Time seems to cease as you become lost in geometry. So banal, banal, that you begin to forget your own existence. Banal. Can I... Can I high-five you, perhaps? Ooh. Your hand remains raised for reasons you cannot recall, for even the potential of excitement has departed from your mind. Oh. Can I poke you? Is it worth poking? Is anything worth poking? You are overcome with existential ennui and fall unconscious. Huh. Interesting. Um, you're, you're interesting. We'll take another look at you, actually. Uh, yes. I will try and feed you this time. It has no mouth or any discernible feature worth noting. You shudder and fall unconscious. I wonder what happens if I just try and leave immediately. You cannot escape the frivolity of your thoughts and are underwhelmed into unconsciousness. Eldritch Boar, Primordi Tedious, Environment Space, Level 5 Vegan, good for you, buddy. Sanity Lost, oh. Did I lose some sanity? Am I am I crazier now? Ah, other names: Primordial Ennui, the Big Boar. The Eldritch Boar is incomprehensible madness, and is and to perceive it is but the interpretation of a forgotten thought. Describing Primordial Ennui is engaging in infinite hyperbole. Well then, um, interesting. Now, just, just for everyone at home, ennui is basically a lack of excitement or enthusiasm due to boredom. So, this guy is all about being a bore. We'll continue on. I wasn't... I wasn't expecting you. A bearded cactus balances before you. I can see that. Can I... can I sing? Your singing seems out of place. Well then, I will high-five you then. You consider high-fiving the cactus, but would rather not make a pincushion of your palm. That would be unfortunate. I'm a poke yet. As you consider poking the cactus, you realize that poking is a part of its very being. In this moment, you share a deeper understanding of the cactus. I am becoming the cactus. I will stand still now. You embrace the cactus's silent stoicism. Your understanding of the cactus grows. Can I high-five you now? As you practice the unspoken art of the cactus, you realize a high five is not with your hand, but with your heart. Well then, um, this has been enlightening. I will, I will depart. 
You go knowing that your bond persists beyond distance, and he gave you his fazan to commemorate your training. Interesting. Ooh, I have his fazan. Fazan? Ishindenshin. Fazan. Interesting. Bearded cacti are highly intelligent plants who can often be found meditating in the desert. Despite their tendency for solitude, or perhaps because of it, bearded cacti are often experts in the art of Ishindenshindo. Now, Ishindenshin uh, is basically translates to what the mind, it's like the mind speaking for the heart. It's very interesting. Um, so yeah, that seems like what this guy was all about. It's like unspoken gestures that are like a language, which is really interesting. Uh, sagacious succulent, calling mentor. Died water, sunlight, CO2. I, you know, that's it's true. Cactus monoecious. Interesting. Let's keep going. Oh, there's the gubbins. I found you. A colossal garden dragon floats before you. Hi there. You're, you're adorable. You're precious. Can I feed you? You glance down at your small snack pack and then watch as the dragon inhales a hill and washes it down with a river. Wow. Can I poke you? You poke at the dragon's living body of earth and plant and ponder its existence. Well then, let's explore. You climb onto the dragon's back to explore further. I can have a picnic? Oh my goodness. You relax and have a snack upon the dragon's tranquil back. I want to- can I groom you? You don't have any tools sufficient for gardening. Well, let's explore more. As you explore, you sense that the dragon is directing you to its exceptionally overgrown mane of tall grass. You need a little trim there, buddy. You need a little trim. You explore the ground beneath the tall grass and discover a sword. Ooh, let's keep exploring. You recognize the sword from a catalog of swords and sundries. It is a, ooh boy, we're going to mispronounce this. Kusanagi no Surugi, the grass cutting sword. A Ryuwazamano, interesting. Now can I groom you? You use the grass cutting sword to trim the dragon's grassy mane. Well, that was cool. You run barefoot across the dragon's lush back. The grass feels pleasant beneath your feet as you flee. That's adorable, wow. Hortus Draco. Environment sky, diet, hills and rivers, yes. Breath weapon pollen, oh wow. Other names, Garden Variety Dragon, and Dragarden. <laughs> There's the sword. <laughs> Garden Dragons are a living gestalt of earth and plants. These colossal but gentle beasts are most often found flying through rainstorms to water their verdant backyards. Interesting. That's cool. Oh! Suddenly, Sasquatch! <laughs> hey there! Um, of course I want to sketch Sasquatch. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> You're modeling. How will you portray her eyes? Okay. Draw me like one of your French girls. I'm down. Um, they are captivating. Yeah. How will you portray her nose? Flat. How will you portray her mouth? Mmm, luscious. Yes. How will you portray her hands? 
Bear, bear, or manicured? I'll go with manicured. How will you portray her fur? Ah, silky. Silky smooth. How will you portray her feet? Um, we're gonna cut foot loose. <laughs> You reveal your masterpiece and the Sasquatch coos. Yas! Yas! Of course I want to give it to you. You give your artwork to Yasquatch. She hugs you. She's powerful strong. That's great. Can I feed you? You offer Yas Squatch a cup of coffee. She shares some cake. You wonder where she had been keeping that cake. Where did you keep that cake? Mmm. Yas Squatch. I'll perform some magic for you. You work your magic, detangling her tresses and providing a much needed salon treatment, though you're missing a certain je ne sais quoi. Oh, that's great. Yasquatch blows you a kiss and gives you some muffins to go. Thank you, Yasquatch. Magnus Futus. Interesting. Coffee and cake. I, I wonder if I did the sketch different, if something different would happen. We'll sketch you and we will do some more disheartening thing. I don't know what aggression means, but yeah, we'll do duck, yeah, we'll do bear, like bear, it's greasy, Ugh. yeah, you think you're Bigfoot, uh, you're, you're Littlefoot, you reveal your finished piece, but it looks like you done messed up, <laughs> can I, can I feed you? You offer Sasquatch some beef jerky, but she has beef with your sketch and thinks you're a jerk. Ballad. Can we high five? The Sasquatch shakes her head and shows you how nice she got her nails did. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want the sketch? You offer your artwork to Sasquatch. Her arms remain crossed as she casts an eclipse worth of shade your way. Oh, I done goofed. Sasquatch looks at you like, who taught you to draw? You contemplate going to art school and fret about your crippling debt. <sighs> well then. Ah. Yes, there is more. Uh, merit slash flaws, big, fur, social anxiety, fabulous, same. Royal Muffins, Sasquatch, Yasquatch. Despite their fabulous naturalist lifestyle, Sasquatch are often misunderstood and maligned. Please don't be prejudiced against Sasquatch. Clothing is uncomfortable and their fabulousness just comes naturally. Well, I think that should should about do it. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, look out for more misadventures. Y'all have a good one. Bye.